What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome into another edition of MVP Sports Live right here. You may be watching us on Twitch. You might be watching us on YouTube as uh, I am joined today with uh, my beautiful co-host for the day, Jake Neverman. Jake, how you doing? Oh, just fantastic. How we doing? Jake, I got to check something really quick because uh, as we started to do the show today, I looked over at... Uh, my sound, like my uh, stream yeah. labs. Yeah. And I got to make sure, okay, I think that we are covered. So uh, the thing that I thought I saw was the, um, the I hate the little green box that Discord has. Um, for those of you who can't see it right now, because I have it covered, like the, me talking, the green box that you guys can now see around, I fucking can't stand it. That's why we have the overlay. And I hate when you don't have it big enough behind to where you can see just the edge of the, like, yeah. green turning on and off. And I thought we had that, but we don't. But welcome into another episode of MVP Sports Live where we talk about sports. We talk about the sports that we love. NBA, NFL, uh, MLB, college sports. Uh, don't have any hockey right now. Don't really have any hockey, guys, uh, besides JD doing the uh, hockey picks for us on Twitter. But... Uh, Today we're talking all baseball. Jake, this week we've already had NFL with me and you. We've already had NBA with Dave and I. Today is MLB. Jake and I are back tomorrow for NFL. But uh, yeah, today's going to be a great day of baseball topics. Uh, Talking about the Cubs, the Yankees, then kind of our early surprises. Before we get into everything though, quick housekeeping. If you're not in the Discord, you're behind the eight ball. It's the greatest community in the universe. And you can join right now for free. If you're on YouTube, link is down below in the description. If you're on Twitter, exclamation Discord gets you the twi- gets you the Discord link so you can join the Discord today and be a part of the greatest community in the universe. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids is how you can go ahead and do that. You can also uh, throw us a sub on Twitch as well. Uh, Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids where we're live every Monday through Friday. We're also on YouTube at MVP Sports. And like I said, rest of the schedule this week, Jake and I are here for MLB today. Tomorrow, Jake and I are back for NFL Draft. And then Friday, Soapy and Dave will be on for NBA. But uh, if uh, any of those can't make it, then Jake and I will fill in. So Friday will be NBA talk. And Jake, the thing I want to ask you first is, what are your thoughts on this early MLB season so far? Before we get into the topic that I want to avoid... Because I don't want to cry for the second time this week. Yeah, it's interesting. The, uh, the first 20 to 25 games of the season is always fun because you get mm-hmm. to see bad teams have a, lot, have a lot of early success and then it falls off and their fans are talking crap right away. And it's like the Oakland A's started the season like 0-5 or something. Now they're 11-7 mm-hmm. and back tied for first. So yeah. it, it's interesting. It's definitely it's, – it's, we weren't used to it because last year in a 60-game mm-hmm. season – you yeah, had to panic once you were bad at 10 games. But we're back to 162 games. It's not like as – a, as a Yankee – and this sounds very condescending to other fan bases, but it's mm-hmm. going to be. As a Yankee fan, I'm used to a lot of success. Mm-hmm. And these early season droughts are something I'm pretty n- – what is it What is it called? Numb to. Yeah. I'm pretty numb to it at this point. So it, 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 I always love the first early season because it's, it's always fun to pull those tweets up later in like three mm-hmm. months from now. Well – I'm glad you brought up the Yankees because we're going to talk about them today. But the team we're going to talk about first, the name title of this podcast today, we're talking about my Cubs, where, Jake, you and I are in a very similar position to start the season. Um, We are both backing teams that have talent to be at the top of a division. I'll say that because the Cubs, I know we both picked to be like the uh, third team in the Central. Um, But neither are playing well right now. And... The one thing, Jake, that I want, this is going to be your job uh, to mm-hmm. start the podcast, is I am at the edge. I am, like, at the edge of the building. I am looking down uh, at the street, at the Chicago uh, street below me, ready to just give up on this season already. Not yeah. only give up on this season, but I'm at the point, Jake, where I'm, like, trade everyone. Chris Bryant, get rid of him. Kyle Hendricks, get rid of him. Javi Baez, ship that bastard out of town, even though I love Javi. Don't get me twisted. I love Javi. Uh, The only one that I want to keep is Anthony Rizzo because he's my boy, and I can never get rid of Anthony Rizzo. Uh, Your job is to uh, 
talk me away from the ledge. Uh, is is it the right time to be talking about blow up the Cubs uh, after this early start for uh, the Northsiders? Well, I don't know if I can fully push you off the edge. I mean, <laughs> pull you back from the edge. Give Sorry, me a little bit around. of a gap. I'll give you. I'll give you a little bit of a gap. The NL Central only thing's possible right mm-hmm. now. The, the division's not very strong. I mean, the Cardinals and the the Reds are leading it right now. Yeah, the Reds are. I'm pretty sure they lost today already to the Diamondbacks, and mm-hmm. they're facing the Diamondbacks obviously again later yeah. today. In well, the... they had the suspended game. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. I think it was like five to four. Diamondbacks yeah, I think they lost five to two. two. Yeah. Yeah, I think they lost five to four. Mm-hmm. I, the Cubs are okay. So you were talking about them trading everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, it's you say it's the right time to sell. Well, the right time to sell was last trade deadline or before last season because <laughs> now you have Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant and Javier Baez who are all mm-hmm. free agents this off season and what value is a team willing to give up if they're not guaranteed a contract extension for some of them? Mm-hmm. I'll start with Javier Baez. He's on a historic rate right now. He's second in the league with 31 strikeouts and zero walks mm-hmm. getting close there. That's, Javier Baez has always been to me, one of the most overrated players in the league. And I know you, you don't, he, swing, he swings for the fences. Like he, he's a boomer bus guy, but I still love and him. And he's also not as good as his defenders made out to be. He just makes mm-hmm. a lot of flashy plays, yeah. much akin to like Derek Jeter back in the day where mm-hmm. he's not a, a great defender, but he makes a lot of flashy plays. You speaking slander on the great number two. It's not slander. It's just the truth. <laughs> he's still an all time. Great. First bow hall of famer. Suck it. Haters. Okay. Back to the Cubs. <laughs> Uh, you look you look at Chris Bryant. I mean, Chris Bryant's a stud. He's off to another hot start today, mm-hmm. not today, this season. Yeah. 977 OPS. He is what he is. He's one of the best third basemen in the baseball. Everybody knows it. You'll still get value for him. And then Anthony Rizzo, even in a slow start for him, is an 811 OPS. So the value they can get for these guys is still there. It just mm-hmm. depends on finding the right team. And honestly, which is pretty hilarious, is that our two teams that we're going to talk about today could really be interested in a trade with each other when the deadline comes around. And what if one of these talented bats or Rizzo mm-hmm. or Baez or Bryant come along, I'm 99% sure the Yankees are going to come knocking because mm-hmm. Rizzo is literally the perfect fit. I mean, first baseman, lefty bat. Just the question is what value do the Cubs think they are going to get. And yeah. the other option for the Cubs is if they were to get Bryant and Rizzo onto extensions, which I know is very unlikely that team is still good and you still contain your best core talent in the lineup. Mm-hmm. So while I think Javier Baez is a lost, is a lost cause in my mind, it it's almost very cubsy to say that Javier Baez will probably be the one that ends up with a contract extension at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And like the thing that I'm thinking, like with me and the Cubs, I don't know. Like the, the baseball mind in me knows why this is all happening. Um, the ownership at the top is making the wrong moves to where the fan base, like I have talked to Cub fans and Jake, you may have your own opinions on this. I know I do as well. Um, I've talked to Cub fans that have been so upset with how the Ricketts have been running things um, Mm -hmm. that they've been like, fuck it. I'm not a Cub fan anymore. I'm a White Sox fan. Now I have my own beliefs that I won't get into, but I will say I am the type of guy you pick a team and unless, like, there are few circumstances. Like the su- Supersonics. Like the Supersonics. Like they move from one place to another. Or you become- if there's, like, for example, I could see if you were a Penn State fan and you didn't go to the school. And then the whole, like, uh, San- Sandusky thing happens and you want to break your allegiance. I totally understand that. Um, but in most cases, you pick a team you might have made the wrong choice, but you're with them for life. Like it is a commitment thing in good times and bad. You are there for them to support them. That's why you're a fan of this team. Um, They're making all the wrong moves. It seems Um, it's starting to seem like in for me that David Ross might not have been the right choice as man. I just think. Um, And the only reason I say that is I was, I was intrigued with the David Ross move. I, I believe that I was even like for David Ross when uh, Brandon and I used to do the full count. And the reason I was for David Ross was I was, I was coming off the Joe Madden. I was like, Hey, we've got the talent on the field. Our players can play. We just need that clubhouse guy. Keep everyone loose in the clubhouse. However, it kind of, kind of goes into it that you need to know a little bit about baseball and i'm not saying uh rossi doesn't know anything but it's very different when you haven't had that managerial uh kind of experience this is kind of your first 
um, go around at it. And the other thing is just the Cubs have been bad this year. And like, I know that baseball is a long season. I know there's teams that get hot. Like you said, they get hot in the early part of the year. Then by the mid season, they cool off by the end of the year. They're completely cold. And it was like, wow, we thought this team would make the playoffs and they didn't. Or wow. We thought this team was dead in the water. They make a push. They get hot at the right time going into the playoffs and then they go to the NLCS and then lose to the Mets. Like I've seen that happen before. Um, but the Cubs this year, I was reading an article and I actually pulled it up here uh, from Jesse Rogers at uh, ESPN, kind of like the Cubs insider for them. He even stated in an entire article that like the Cubs offensive woes, like they are so bad offensively to start this year that it's reaching like historic levels. Like this offense can't do anything. And it's like, I was looking today out of all the series we've had or series. I um, we've had two against the P- pirates, one against the brewers, one against the Braves. And then we're currently um, in one game two tonight uh, against the Mets. Do you know off the top of your head, Jake, I'll quiz you. Do you want to know how many of those series we've actually won? One, one, and it was the pi- it was the first pirate series. Yeah. <laughs> like that was it. We yeah. lost game one. I freaked out. Holy shit! We lost to the pirates. The season is over. Then we beat them twice. It's like okay, uh, maybe this season can be salvaged. And it's been the rest of the time to where I don't know if this is just a hey we got off to a bad slump, or if this is wow this team is not good anymore, and Cub fans should be panicking. Well, there's a lot to unpack in what you just went I, I, <laughs> so let me. I ranted. That was my fandom kind of yeah. just getting everything let up me, and uh, just vomiting. <laughs> I'll start. First, I'll start. I'll, I guess I'll go into punch order. Mm-hmm. So the ownership reminds me a lot of uh, FSG, who are the, the Red Sox owners. Yeah. And they they got their World Series title. And then they kind of were like, all right, we got to cut salary. Got to get under the luxury tax. We want to avoid mm. that bill like the – like the Red Sox did with trading Mookie. I know the Red Sox are doing great right now. It's not really because of their ownership. It's because Mm -hmm. their front office is actually competent. And then you had the Cubs situation where they were in the same situation, yet their front office left. He he went to the MLB office. And then you're You're stuck there. You're talking about Jed and Theo. Yes, they're gone. That was, Mm -hmm. and in in the Red Sox case, you know, they, they, they went a completely different direction of trading their best player and actually getting value back for him, while the Cubs kind of seem just to hang on and do nothing, which, I, like I've said in uh, a lot of NBA podcasts, is the worst place you can be as a team is purgatory. And that's kind of mm-hmm. where the Cubs have been the last couple of years because you knew they weren't going to win, but they were just good enough to be right on the edge of the playoffs every year. Maybe get in or that. I take I take that back. Epstein is gone. Jed Hoyer is now in Epstein. Yeah. Spot. Well, Epstein was the one who made all the moves to yeah. get them to that yeah. World Series. Yeah. But like I said, Jed Hoyer's gone. I was like, that ain't right, and I immediately had to correct myself. Yeah. But then you move on to the David Ross hiring, and speaking from experience, when a mm-hmm. front office hires a former player who's a shit manager, it's pretty easy to figure it out. He's a yes man for the front office. Is that a, what is, he that, is? is that a jab at Aaron Boone? I mean, I've been on the fire and boon train since 2018. He is a terrible manager and will continue to be a terrible manager. Mm-hmm. And he's there just to be a yes man to the for the front office. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the same situation with the Cubs, honestly. Mm-hmm. But it just seems like he's kind of there to take the fire while the front office takes none of the blame. Mm-hmm. So wh- while the Cubs have the talent per se, they've also not really replaced a lot of the pieces that they've missed. And something like... It's something pretty minor, but when your pitching takes that much of a hit from year to year and then you trade you Darvish in the offseason, mm-hmm. I mean, Kyle Hendricks has the ability to still be an elite pitcher. He but hasn't he been that hasn't great been. this year. He's, yeah, not he this hasn't year. Been. Yeah, he hasn't been, but I still think he has the. And mm-hmm. Craig, also, on the an elite, Craig Kimbrell's been unreal this year. He, this was like his first base runner he allowed today I, in the game. Th- that amuses me, by the way, to where it's yeah. like, if you asked me, would you rather have. Sean Anderson memeing to death every home run that Craig Kimbrell is giving up and the Cubs are good or Craig Kimbrell is fucking lights out and I haven't seen a single Kimbrell yeah. tweet from Sean Anderson, but the Cubs suck. I would say, sorry, Craig, I'm, I'm bashing your stats because I want my team to be good. Yeah, I mean, he's been incredible this year. Mm-hmm. It's just like I said. <laughs> This I get, and I get why Cubs fans are frustrated because I'd be the same thing. It, it's if if your team is going to be bad and they're not willing to mm-hmm. pay 
not even into the luxury tax, just getting up there and getting yeah. their best players extended and I mean, keeping they them. They didn't even want to pay Schwarber. Yeah, that was, and then they signed Jock Peterson, who's just, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't understand. I, I mean, I genuinely Which, don't understand it. And like the one thing I will say about the Schwarber thing, just because I brought it up, is the only thing you can say that would maybe rationalize it is like his play in the field, but it's not that bad. Everything he yeah. brings to the plate almost outweighs how negative or how bad he is it in the field. Yeah, I just the 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 direction the team is. I it seems like it's clearly that they're going to a reboot. It's just mm -hmm. they're delaying the inevitable of starting yeah. that. So even this year, this off season, if you knew that that you were going to be bad and you were going to trade Hugh Darvish and all that, why didn't you entertain offers for Rizzo and why mm -hmm. didn't you entertain offers for Chris Bryant yeah. and even Javier Baez? Because I mean, who wants Javier Baez? Somebody yeah. will, but it's just, like now, how many like how many prospects are you going to get from teams? You're not going to get nearly as many anymore. Yeah. I mean, you'll still or get a good as amount. high of prospects. Yeah, exactly. I their only hope is that a team wants a pair. So like mm -hmm. the Yankees come in and want Anthony Rizzo and Kyle Hendricks. It's yeah. something like that. And then you can get more prospects. But mm -hmm. even at that point, uh, I mean, Rizzo's a free agent. So what is a team willing to give up? I mean, we've seen it in the past. If a team is is a piece away from winning a World Series, yeah. like we saw with the Cubs and the Indians, is they gave up top prospects to get a like, Rolls Chapman and Andrew mm -hmm. Miller. So maybe that's your saving grace. It's just it's confusing and you're hurting your draft pick next year by being even somewhat good for half a season. Mm -hmm. So it, it just, it, it's all the whole situation is just puzzling. Well, and that's like the one thing that you said is the one saving grace is how many, how many contenders and like JD brings up Jays will give you Biggio for Bryant. I would take that. I would take credit. I would, I would take Biggio. Um, I don't think they're. I don't think the Blue Jays are in that market because they're not going to be willing to sign Chris Bryant to a massive three hundred million dollar yeah, deal. And that's well, that's the thing is like how many of these contenders are going to be in the in the situation or be okay with the situation that the um, Cubs were in with the Rollers Chapman? Meaning, yeah. I'm just going to trade for him if it gets me a World Series, like. That's the only reason why I'm not mad at that trade is because the Cubs no, you would never World be mad at that trade. That you won a World Series, it doesn't. But if, that is a. But if we lost the World Series, I'd be pissed be, off at that oh, trade. I'd be pissed for event yeah. entirety. It's, yeah, it's a big market move. I don't think mm -hmm. you'd see a team like if you're too, like the Blue Jays or somebody like that in a small market that's willing to give up a top mm -hmm. top prospect to get one piece to go for a World Series. I mean, the Blue Jays might be willing to give up somebody, but it probably wouldn't be for a bat. Their pitching is horrendous, so maybe mm -hmm. they're a team that could be in for Kyle Hendricks too. The Cubs, are, their, their saving grace is that they're in a terrible division. Is their division sucks and has sucked for a couple of years now. But the Reds are slowly improving. They have a lot of young talent. Uh, mm -hmm. India has looked amazing so far this year. And then the Cardinals are just that organization is always there. And landing somebody like Nolan Arenado maintains that they're going to be at the top of that division or around the top for mm -hmm. a long time. So I just – the Cubs need to pick a direction and go in that direction fully. There's no half-assed, we're going to – yeah, but we might win like 80 games and still be like somewhat competitive. Like, no, you want to either win 50 or you want to win 100. You don't want to be in between, and that's where you just kill your organization. So right now I'm kind of looking at the standings, and I'm trying to like pinpoint some teams that like – these are going to be teams that are going to be in a playoff hunt – and could they use some extra firepower? Um, one team that I think of off the bat, and this is one that's on the outside. Would a team just, before I even say the player that uh, I think they would target is, do you think the A's, because they're a lower, I'm going to say lower market team, they're not like the Yankees or anything. Um, do you think they would be in a situation where it's like, hey, we're top two in this division. We need, in my mind, I would be looking at a shortstop or maybe an infielder because, you know, you lost Marcus Simeon. Maybe Javi Baez kind of uh, speaks to that one. Hey, you lose one shortstop. I'll give you another shortstop who can play second base and third base um, if you need him to. Like, would the A's be a team that would be in for doing that, though? For, hey, we're going to trade for this guy even if he leaves us in the offseason. Yeah, the only problem with the A's they don't spend money. So the Cubs would. Mm -hmm. I, this is this is a good thing though. So the Cubs would have to be willing to eat most of the contract and still pay the salary, yeah. and in a, in order to get a top prospect. Now I'm not 
I'm not going to act like I'm familiar with the A's mm-hmm. farm system because I'm just not. I yeah. mean, Elvis Andrews has been horrendous for them. So they could be a guy. This could be a team that goes after a Javier Baez, or I mean, they don't need a, they don't need a first base and they don't need a third base. Mm-hmm. And so Brian or Rizzo don't make sense. Yeah. But there is a DH in the AL, so maybe they could slide Metals cool. into the DH and put Anthony Rizzo at starting first. Here's the other thing with Chris Bryant, though. Does a team trade for him? Even like, let's say they don't they don't need a third baseman, but let's say they need a left fielder. Mm-hmm. Do they trade for Chris Bryant, knowing, hey, I love the bat that he has. He'll be playing left field for us this year, not third base. I would doubt it. Uh, Mark Cannizzi, their, their outfield is actually very good. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm Loriano. not saying them. I'm just saying, like in general, would oh, a team, in general, would a team be like, yeah? I don't give a shit what he feels like. I'm trading for him this year. He will be a rental. He'll just play left field for us and not third base. I mean, yeah, if the price is right, anything mm-hmm. can happen with that. But I, I don't know if a team's like, I don't think a team in the AL is way more likely just because of the DH also being integrated. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a possibility. I don't know if I would put it down as like a certainty or anything. Because like two teams I think of for Chris Bryant are the Phillies and the Mets. Like if they, and here's the thing with the East, if they're fighting for the top and the Braves can tr- continue to struggle, especially with the uh, Acuna injury that like, depending on how long he's out and that, how uh, that affects their win losses. I look at those two teams and I think the Phillies is, I just looked at it. So don't, don't yeah. come after me if I'm wrong. I think the Mets third baseman is JD Davis and then Alex Brom is the third baseman. For um, the Phillies, which uh, um, Chris Bryant is an upgrade on both of those guys easily. Like, uh, am I, I don't wrong? know if uh, J.D. Davis is very, very good. I don't know if depends on the price for an upgrade. Obviously, mm-hmm. Chris Bryant past numbers, but J.D. Davis has been I mean, he's been in and out of the lineup hurt already. He's only played yeah. five games. So, I, I mean, it definitely depends. Garrett may even be good for them. Mm-hmm. So they, they definitely could move for him. It's not a necessity for them, yeah. per se. Uh, their bullpen still a big question mark. And then their outfield positions are still somewhat if Conforto mm-hmm. can't get going. The that those are the Mets though. I mean, Steve Cohen sh- has basically been out there and said that he's willing to do anything and everything to make this team compete. Mm-hmm. So trading for a guy like that definitely is a, is a way to get that done. So the Mets are a candidate, and I think in basically every superstar that comes up in the next couple of years, you're going to hear the Mets' names just because Steve Cohen has unlimited ma- amounts of money and has been known in his capital ventures to just overspend wildly. So I'd expect that in, in his baseball to stay. So, yeah, I mean, the Mets are going to be mentioned in everything. And mm-hmm. the Phillies, I'm not quite sure with their ownership if they're willing to pay the tax. So that'll be a question mark. So the I got one last team. And this is one that... Y- it's not impossible because the Cubs and this team have done business before. Would the White Sox call for any three, any four? Would they call for, I don't know if they'd call for pitching necessarily, maybe like a Craig Kimbrell if he keeps his numbers up, but mainly the big three, Baez, Bryant, Rizzo. White Sox are a team. Their fan base is already pushing World Series hopes. I don't know if Rick Hahn has a little bit more level-headed uh, kind of like mindset yeah. for this team this year, but if the White Sox are top of their division, of course you're going to call. You're going to see what's on the table, but do you see the White Sox making a serious push, and would any of the three Cubs make sense for them? Well, it's funny that you mentioned Chris Bryant playing left field because he could literally get plugged in and play left field for the White Sox. Yeah. Uh, the White Sox are an interesting team. I don't – obviously, like I said earlier, the AL AL having DH changes everything mm-hmm. with those teams because, I mean, if you look at the, the positions that those three play, I mean, Jose Abreu, Tim Anderson, and Yoan Moncada, those yeah. are arguably their three best players play those positions. So, I mean, it's not – and you could slide Tim Anderson over and get Nick Madrigal out of the lineup and put Baez at short or something like that, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's, that's worth it at all yeah. for the for the White Sox. Um, I think Bryant would probably be the most realistic just because he you, can play plugged in the left field. Yeah, you move Garcia over to right, you get Adam Eaton out of the lineup, and Chris Bryant's in left field. Or you keep, or you just keep Eaton and Robert and just take. I mean, Andrew Vaughn out of left or whoever at the mm-hmm. at the time is playing left. Yeah, they've had a they've had a rotating. Uh, position for and that I mean, for left field and that's the thing like 
they're a team then that could have options if they get a Bryant and then Eloy comes back. Yeah. And I mean, that's what I mean. Eloy too. is supposed to come back this year, right? Like he's not done for the, yeah. the entire Yeah. But getting a guy like, I mean, that the only way the White Sox make this move is if they see a clear chance to win a World Series. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, the AL has been, it's, it's again, it's too hard to read right mm-hmm. now. I wouldn't read until after 60 some games, probably. But, I mean, if they see a clear window, it's definitely it's never hurts to add more talent and just find a place to plug them in. Yeah. And you know what? I backed off on uh, I backed off on Kyle Hendricks. Looking at their starters, I think they'd be interested in at least taking a look. I think at any any team that trades with the Cubs, if Kyle mm-hmm. Hendricks is still on the Cubs, they're gonna ask about him because because he's gonna go ahead, go ahead. I would say he's just going to – he has struggled early in the year. If he mm-hmm. continues this, he, everybody knows what he's capable of. You're going to be able to get him at a cheap price, and it's a low-risk, high-reward type of deal. And here's the reason – and this is my crack pipe theory. Not really crack pipe, but my own theory. It's not like um, I'm talking to the players and stuff. But the reason I think Hendricks has not been performing well this year is I've maybe come to the conclusion of maybe he's just not an ace guy. Maybe he's the guy, it's like, you have your ace like we had in John Lester. He's the number two. He's yep. good in that number two role. He doesn't have the pressure of being the ace on him. Um, he doesn't have to go up all the time against ace-level talent. He gets to kind of, now number twos are no slouch. It ain't like he's going up against fifth guys in the bullpen. But, like, with how the White Sox have been this year, it's like Lucas Giolito's had some good performances. Carlos Rodon has had good performances. Keiko hasn't been the worst. Dylan Cease has been okay. And Quintana's been, or not Quintana, he's with the um, Angels now. I was going to say he's been hot shit. I just wanted to bash Jose Quintana. Um, but like Cease, really to me, Cease and Keiko haven't been outstanding to where it's like, maybe you do get a Kyle Hendricks. And if he's number two in your rotation for the playoffs, yeah. if he's number three, like y- y- you're still getting a guy that's have playoff experience. And that's what, the thing with these Cub players is they all have playoff experience, which on its own could aid a team who is going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, that's where I, it's, yeah, it's the point. I mean, Kyle Hendricks, mm-hmm. you're pretty, you're not trading for him. None of these teams that are going to win a title right now are going to be looking for an ace. They're just looking for a guy yeah. to fill in the middle of the rotation. And I mean, throwing Kyle Hendricks out there for game three would be, I mean, great for some of these teams and a huge upgrade. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully for the Cubs sake, he starts playing a little bit better because then mm-hmm. you can get a better price for him. But I mean, as of now, I mean, Baez and Brian Arizzo, I don't think Baez as much, but Brian Arizzo will still bring in a very, very solid price. Mm-hmm. And just the question marks are Baez and Hendricks. So let's take a, let's take a little bit of a move. We're going from Chicago. We're going to New York. We're talking about your team now, the New York. In New York. <laughs> and uh, mainly the whole topic of this is how worried should fans be or should we be? about the Yankees, and here's where I want to start, Jake, because uh, first off, if you're a Yankee fan out there, follow Jake Neverman, at Jake Neverman, um, because he's always tweeting about, he's a Yankee fan, he's always tweeting about the Yankees, he's got some gems, and we'll plug. you had one gem on the 18th that I actually, mm-hmm. it got me thinking as a non-Yankee fan. You said, mm-hmm. I don't have many thoughts on the Yankees, but one thing I do question is putting the same thing in every year and expecting a different result. I'm harsh on Boone usually, but all the blame is on Cashman. No real changes to the lineup led to this. Because of that, should fans be worried unless the Yankees go out in the, by the trade deadline and actually make some changes? Yeah, see, we say this every year with the Yankees, though. They should make they should make a move to the deadline. Mm-hmm. They should make a move to the and deadline. They don't. And... A little rant session here. So Go ahead. people like to shift the blame to Hal Steinbrenner because he doesn't want to pay the luxury tax, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when his when George Steinbrenner was the owner, it was money, 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 money. It doesn't matter. Just give me money, money, yeah. money. When it's it different all costs. Now. Yeah. And I, while that's great and all, it's not a sustainable business structure. It's just not. Mm-hmm. And I know the Yankees bring in a massive amount of money. And they probably could afford to do that. But mm-hmm. the point is they're still spending $209 million on payroll for this season. And the team is not good enough right now. I, mm-hmm. I, can that change? Sure. But when you're spending $209 million and your backup first baseman is not a first baseman and Jay Bruce, mm-hmm. and then he's forced into retirement because of how bad he was at baseball, mm-hmm. I have to start questioning Brian Cashman. And I understand the 
outrage towards Steinbrenner because he's not spending more money. But if you're spending $209 million every year, I'm sorry, you should be able to build a better roster. I, mm-hmm. I, I get the Stanton and every, the Stanton deal kind of looking back at it kind of sucks. I get it because you don't want to be paying this guy for the next seven years, but it's happened and you have to be able to build a roster around. That's only 10% about what the whole payroll is, is him. Mm-hmm. DJ LeMay here being bring back was huge. Gary Sanchez has struggled, but the whole the whole problem with the Yankees is like it sounds so cliche to say is their home run or bust. And right now they're in the bottom third in the league in OPS, slugging, on base percentage, every every hitting statistic, they are in the bottom three. Yeah. Now people want to question the pitching with Tyone and Kluber. Well, guess what? Right now I see Ty uh, Kluber has first and second with one out and the top of the fifth and the game's zero zero. Mm-hmm. He's thrown four scoreless innings and the offense hasn't done shit. Yeah. Last night, you had Tyone let up one run in five innings pitching, and the mm-hmm. bullpen didn't allow a single run after that, and you barely won three to one on errors from the other teams. Yeah. It's not the pitching that's the problem. It's the hitting. It's that mm-hmm. you consistently in last year in the postseason, you lost it to the Rays because you lost two to one on a Michael Brousseau homer in the bottom of the eighth, and your offense can only score one run in a whole game five against the Rays. Yeah, when, and you decide- when you've got names like Judge, Glaber, Stanton, like yeah. these are no – like chopped no. liver kind of names. These are prime names that should be able to score more than one run against even the best pitchers in baseball. And the year before that, you lost in game seven of the, of the ALCS to Jose Altuve hitting the a homer. They cheated. The cheaters. They cheated. They cheated. They, did. they cheated. But it's just, it's continually frustrating to see the same thing year in and year out is that it's home run or bust. This entire season's in bust. And the funny part is, is that mm-hmm. they're only five games back of the division, even though they've been this terrible. But I, I I'm not worried. I'm more frustrated because while I still think I still think the Yankees will probably win the AL East. I, I don't really I don't really see a doubt in it. It's just continually the frustrating. The Red to Sox see this aren't going to hold on to the division, Jake. Unless they, unless they make a massive move for some pitching. No, I'm sorry. I, I you're 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 a Yankee fan. Of course, you're going to say that about the Red Sox. You're damn right. But it's it, I don't think their pitching holds up, and their hitting's been at unreal. They're the number one hitting yeah. team in baseball, and I don't think that keeps up. Mm-hmm. But the Yankees are the Yankees, and this is going to sound so conceited and so I, privileged, I guess, but the Yankees haven't been to a World Series since 2009. Mm-hmm. That is embarrassing for an organization that is as astute as the Yankees and is yeah. the most one of the most valuable franchises in the world in sports. So Think, while I un- put it into, res- res- uh, or into perspective is this. If LeBron James and the NBA didn't go to a finals in nine yeah. years, that would be the problem. It's that's how we. That. That's how we should it's look. It's been thirteen years. Yeah. No, twelve years. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's how you should almost look at this, just because of the Yankees and their brand and their market of yeah. them not being in the World Series in twelve years would be if like Michael Jordan or LeBron James or Kobe. Well, Kobe at the end of the year was like this, but like a LeBron James, if he didn't go to the finals in twelve years, or like when the Lakers weren't going to finals like it was a problem yeah and the lakers went out and they made changes and they Mm -hmm. got lebron and they traded for ad that's what an organization does instead of sitting on their ass for 12 years and acting like everything's fine because we're making the playoffs and losing Mm -hmm. and the yankee the yankees are different from most of the organizations in baseball and again it sounds Mm -hmm. conceited and douchey but they're they're the yankees they are they have they have 27 world titles like this is and Brian Cashman continuously just kind of deflects and goes, mm-hmm. yeah, but it'll get going. Yeah, but it'll, yeah, but it'll change. And I, I agree with him that I think this season will change when that happens. If it's a week from now, two weeks from now, three mm-hmm. weeks from now, whatever it is, there needs to be a big move for this team to get better and get the lineup going. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what that move is. Maybe it is going after a guy like Chris Bryant or Anthony Rizzo. Mm-hmm. I just, something has to change with this lineup and the way it's structured and having so many righties in the lineup it's just it's terrible, and mm-hmm. also Aaron Boone has to go. He's a ter- he cannot structure lineups. He's terrible. The lineup today having Judge and Stanton back to back at the two three <laughs> makes completely no sense. DJ still the leadoff hitter makes no sense. It's just mm-hmm. it's frustrating. It's a, it's a whole three sixty. Everybody deserves blame. I just think it starts from the top. So, you know what I learned? You know what I just realized about uh about both of our managers, Jake, which this just blew my sure. mind. Um, not only is the job they have now their first managerial experience Mm -hmm. not only did they play for the team that they are currently playing on and they didn't play for them their entire career they both came into the job after being analysts on tv 
Yeah, it's weird, right? Because correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Aaron Boone, he wasn't... ESPN. He, he was ESPN, but he wasn't like uh, the Sunday Night Baseball. He was on Baseball Tonight, right? I think he was like, yeah, like he was in studio. He didn't, yeah. I don't think he announced games. Where like Rossi was like a color guy for yeah, their, like, I just... their games. Where it's like, that just hit me. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. First job, came in as analyst that they did for a short time after being a player. And look at how each of them was doing. Now, Boone, more of a kind of what he's been the manager for. This is now his fourth season, where Rossi, this is only his second. Yeah, four years too long. Mm-hmm. I just, I, it's just, I remember when they hired Aaron Boone, and I questioned at the time, I, I was like, hey, maybe it's cool, he's a former Yankee, it might work yeah. out, but it's just been terrible. I mean, he has no control, no mm-hmm. mind how to control a bullpen, no how, no game strategy, nothing. I And it, mm-hmm. it just, it's frustrating at a point that you look at this lineup, and I could probably construct a better lineup than he could at this point. It's just... It's just beyond frustrating. Is there any, besides making a trade at the deadline, is there anything the Yankees can do this year to kind of right the ship? Or is it basically, we got to make a move, they probably won't, we ride out for the season, and then we hope something changes in the offseason? Yeah, it's kind of what the Sixers were like two years ago. It's like, <laughs> you're, you're sitting there and you're like, well, we know this is going to end with a first-round exit or a second, mm-hmm. whatever it is, if they're lucky enough to win a playoff series. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know most likely to compete with a team like the Dodgers in the World mm-hmm. Series, you're going to have to make some massive change. And maybe Cashman finally goes. I'm, I mean, I doubt that it happens. I don't know if Hal mm-hmm. has the balls to do it, but maybe eventually this is the can't Bo- maybe booney would go first right booney would go before cash i think they might i think they might be a package deal okay. hopefully that, that's the hope at least mm-hmm. hopefully yeah. they both go at the end of the season because like, unless I'll, we win a world series oh fuck it then i mean but that's the thing ideally do you how much you as the yankee fan how much do you believe in this team to turn around and win a world series like i know anything can yeah. happen but i i thought at the beginning of the year we both predicted them to get to the world series neither mm-hmm. of us had them winning it I didn't yeah. think they could win it because they can't compete with a team like the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers are going to run away with the MLB as long as they stay healthy. There's only one team, one team, that I think that can handle the Dodgers. It's not the Padres. And that's the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. Ro- Rockies got the better better, better but hand of them is, early in the season. This is, what, this, this is what I mean, though. So I am literally have the Yankee game <laughs> off to my right right here. Yeah. And – Kluber is at 90 pitches. Mm-hmm. It's a one. They've now scored on a sack fly. There's two outs. And it's a 3 0 count. If he walks this guy and yeah. Boone doesn't come take him out, it just proves my point even further. That I mean, he just, he's confidence. Just, I just, let's see. He just, he just walked him. And okay, there goes Boone. Why does he have batting gloves on? I, I genuinely, I listen. Aaron Boone mm-hmm. seems like a great guy. I hope he has great health because he had the heart problems in the, in the spring training. But I've been yeah. calling for him to get fired since 2018. I just, mm-hmm. It's beyond frustrating at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep talking about the Yankees if you want me to rant. I got in, I interrupted for a second. My mom came in, wanted, uh, I had her debit card, so she wanted that. But uh, I was actually going to change us into the last segment, um, yep. which is we're talking probably not going to be a long segment, but is there anything on the Yankees you think we haven't hit? No, we just, it's okay. all frustration and boiling over at this point. <laughs> Jake's like, I don't want to be angry. Uh, but biggest, like, what surprises? I know we did our overreactions after the first opening weekend. Um, yeah. But there have been some surprises this year, especially in the standings, Jake. Um, <laughs> like, I know this isn't going to stand. But, like, I'm looking at the standings. Can I go on a mini rant here? Go on your rant. Right fuck I have to pee, so go on your rant. Yeah, fuck ESPN. Uh, reason why I say that is I am literally, literally trying to pull up. First, I was trying to pull up depth charts during the Cubs segment, and every single time it's like website fail, website fail, website fail. Eventually, I went to uh, MLB. Now I'm like, oh, I'll try to use the app because maybe that's better for standings. And now the app won't even show me the standings. So. Just pardon the language, but fuck ESPN uh, because they have a trash app and a trash website uh, for tablets. But like what I was saying, I don't know if Jake said because he said he had to go uh, take a pee. But like what I was getting to is like you look at it, it's like the Red Sox are leading the East right now. 
The Royals are leading the AL Central right now. Um, the Mariners didn't have didn't have them anywhere near the top of a division. Right now they're in second because they're a half game behind the A's who played today. Um, even in the National League, did anyone have the Braves at the bottom of the division to start? Did anyone have the Pirates not at the bottom of the uh, division? Did anyone have the Giants at eleven and seven? Like. Jake, are you back? Was that you? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. Uh, I know these standings aren't going to stay. I know yeah. these teams that are high up, like the last one I mentioned, the Giants, are not going to stay. Yes. But there are still surprises. To you, what is a big surprise this early season? And you're like, holy shit, I can't believe this is going the way it's going right now. How the fuck are the Red Sox the number one hanging team in baseball? <laughs> I don't understand. I wonder if it – I mean – I I'm not going to say it, but Alex is it Cora, opponents? Ba- I'm, I'm back from Alex Cora is back mm-hmm. from his cheating suspension, <laughs> back his manager, and his team is once again the number one hitting team in baseball. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's cheating, but no, but JD Martinez has been phenomenal for them. And I, I, I thought that they'd be m- more competent than last year, obviously, mm-hmm. but nowhere near the degree that they've been playing so far. I mean, they have. One, two, three, four, five, five hitters in their lineup over 900 OPSs. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. For, I, a, for a second, I thought you were going to use the stat you hate, Jake. Batting average. Yeah, batting average. The use never use the batting average. <laughs> but like, never use it. even looking at their schedule, like they played the Orioles, like Orioles in two series. Uh, everything else has been though the Rays. We thought the Rays would be a good team this year. Um, the Red Sox took three of three against them. Uh, the Twins, they started off on fire. They go ahead and play the Red Sox. The Twins only get one of four from the Red Sox. And now against the White Sox, a team yet again that we thought would be in the playoffs. Chicago Southsiders believe World Series this year. Um, and yes, the White Sox got the uh, middle two games, but they split 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two on the series with the Red Sox. It's like... I did not expect them to be this good. Do I expect them to keep it up? Probably not. But I want to see how long this can go. Like, and that's most of these teams. How long can they spread this out? How long can they keep the heater going? I don't know, honestly. And then Nick Nelson just walked a guy in on four pitches. Yeah, see, Boone just continuously makes great decisions on this bullpen. Um, I... I don't know what the Red Sox. Honestly, the rest of the division has is in the bottom third. Every single one of them in hitting uh, major hitting statistics. So, I mean, they just need to pile up as many wins as they can early in the season. And even if they play 500 ball down the second half of the season, who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll be able to keep lead. It's just mm-hmm. I don't know. The AL East has been so disappointing outside of the Red Sox that yeah. maybe I I don't know. Maybe it's just a maybe it's a good. I don't know. I honestly don't have words for it because Mm -hmm. like the Red Sox have been so good and the rest of the division has just been so bad. I mean, so I know Eric in Twitch chat said surprises the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm going to the central with mine, but mine ain't the Milwaukee Brewers. Like the Milwaukee Brewers, I expected them to be a team that they were going to be like second or third in the division. I think I had them second. I had the Reds, the Cubs third, Reds fourth. I want to say I'd have to look back at them. My biggest surprise in the central is how are the Cardinals in fourth place? I know they're three games back of the Brewers. All right. Three games back is three games back. It's not like it's a death sentence, but like the Cardinals, they look good early. Like the Reds, them and them and the Cardinals had a good series. You want to talk about a team that's had pitching problems. The Cardinals. Find any pitcher this year for the Cardinals that hasn't given up six or more runs. I'll wait. I don't think no Flaherty has, has he? I he might be the only one. Like Castillo, Wainwright, like all these guys are giving up like I I feel like every other game it's like five, six, seven runs that their starters are giving up. Yeah, I can't I lied for opening day, six earned runs for Jack, yeah. Jack Flaherty. So I mean, yeah, the Cardinals are I, I think their whole pitching rotation was a question mark outside of Flaherty with mm-hmm. Gant Martinez and Wainwright. So yeah, I I <laughs> like, guess you should we seen this should coming, we but... have made a topic? Is it time to worry about the Cardinals? No, because their front office is so good and they're mm-hmm. consistently there that uh, they'll find pitching. They always do. It's just their lineup is. It's funny because you say that pitching's been so bad and they're seven and nine because 
I mean, Dylan Carlson and Yadier Molina have been amazing, and Nolan Arenado on a bad start is hitting 815, has an 815 OPS. So I don't know if I'd worry about the Cardinals yet. It's just, I mean, again, this is what I try to say is that I don't really judge baseball teams till 60 games into the season, and then you kind of make what you want out of it. Is my mark going to turn on? There you go. Yeah, you're there. Uh, it's like, I hate this thing sometimes. That's why I, I want to spend the money to get a sure mic because uh, it's just so much better. But, like, that that's the reason why I kind of wanted to do this. It's a fun little, like, holy shit, none of this is going to matter. Like, for example, like, the Braves. Do you think – how worried are you right now with the Braves? With me, it's one of those, like, the only thing is – I mean, the Acuna Jr. T- injury does not help. I know he's only day to day. What is it? A back strain, right? So I think it's an oblique. An oblique like strain. It's a strain of some sort. Um, and yet again, day to day means he could be out for a week, two weeks, couple days. Um, they didn't like, put him on the IL, so it's probably just going to be a couple days. Yeah, like if they start losing games without him, I mean, right now they're seven and ten. Um, they they've been another team to where it's like. Yet again, we just, I think it's with baseball, it's like you said. We just, we pick these teams, we make the predictions, and then we expect the good ones to come out like firecrackers right away. Yeah, it's 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 very hard for people to be calm. The social media era, people just mm-hmm. want to jump to overreactions, and I'm weird that I find myself level-headed on <laughs> social media compared to other people. But I mean, I don't really, I, I don't buy too much into this early mm-hmm. season. I mean, if it continues yeah. for another 40 games then let's maybe. be on, let's be honest jake level-headed until someone comes after joel and beat joel yeah, hans and beat i'm sorry <laughs> or or joel, no you said it wrong joel hans mv beat mv beat mv beat you're right yeah i mean i i try to keep a level head with most of these teams I, mm-hmm. the, the only worry with the Braves was their pitching was a concern coming into yeah. the season and it has been terrible so mm-hmm. again all these teams are going to need starting pitching once once it comes later, except for the yeah. Dodgers because they just fucking have Kershaw, Bueller, and Bauer. Yeah. So it's just – it's going to be interesting, honestly. I, I mm-hmm. think this deadline is going to be pretty active compared to the last couple. Uh, we say that, then it won't be – it will be dead. But I cannot wait for trade rumors. That's the best part of the MLB season in my mind is just talking yeah. about these trade rumors. Like I loved – my favorite time was uh, – so Brandon and I are doing the podcast, right? We are about 80% through the podcast. Guess what happens? What, trade. Mookie Betts gets traded. Uh, yeah, the Mookie trade, And yeah. the entire, like, we were live on Twitch at the time. And I was like, well, the entire 50 first, like, half of this podcast does not matter anymore. Because we were talking about where he could go. And then he landed. And then we just talked about um, the Mookie trade. Like, that's my favorite time. I love fuck it. I love talking about trades in all sports. Um, any final thoughts about anything that you think we need to talk about before we wrap this show up? Stay calm if you're a fan of a team struggling. I get it could be frustrating. So I should back away only, from the back away from only, the ledge, Jake. Yes, don't do not blow go it off up. the ledge. Relax. It's only been like twenty games. You'll be mm-hmm. fine. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys for being as great as you always are. Remember, join the Discord if you have not already. It's the greatest community in the universe. Link down below or exclamation Discord into Twitch chat gets you that link. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids is one way you can do so. You can also throw us a sub on Twitch. Thank you to our Patreon sponsor, Pat Hill. We're on Twitch, twitch.tv backslash MVP vids every Monday through Friday. We're also on YouTube at MVP Sports tomorrow. Guess who you guys get? You get us again. Uh-huh. The ra- the ragtag crew this week of uh, Jake Neverman and myself. Uh, we'll be talking NFL draft for the second time this week uh, because tomorrow is the official one week point until we are watching the NFL draft. That means also, if you have any questions about the NFL draft, let us know. Hit me up on Twitter, either at MVP underscore vids or even at Ricky Widmer Hell, even at Jake Neverman, all of us on Twitter, ask them. Um, And then on Friday, we'll be talking NBA. It'll be Soaps and Dave doing that. I want to thank you once again for being as great as you guys always are. We'll be back tomorrow. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Bye.